this is using science and technology to biohack your health and fitness. And I'm PJ. I'm the XGym founder and biohacker since 1987. So who knows definition of biohacker? It's pretty much the title here. And hacks are shortcuts, tips, tricks, things like that. And uh, so just a quick announcement here on this tablet to enter your information. If you want to connect with me later to get updates on science, technology, the latest in research, and a free brain type test, which I'll explain later. I'm giving it away for free for the people here. And you'll be very interested in that later when I, when I talk through it because it's a, it's a huge hack for your brain and for your health and for your fitness. So if you're interested, no pressure, if you're interested though, then I'll know that you're interested because you entered your stuff there. So I just want to get right into the show and tell. And basically that's what this is. It's a show and tell of a lot of the gizmos and gadgets I have. And since 1987 that I've collected and a lot have, have worked really well and some haven't worked at all. I'm not going to talk about the duds today, but uh, we're going to talk about some of the stars. This is a piece of equipment I have at the Kirkland X Gym. And this is about the price of a really nice used car. And it's not your everyday Tanita home scale where you just stand on it. It's got four electrodes or two electrodes and you know, it the reason that that doesn't work very well is because electricity has to follow the shortest path, right? So it's going to go from that foot through your crotch and down to that foot. And there's going to be an algorithm that's going to guesstimate in a very general sense, maybe what you are from here up. Well, this has elect eight different electrodes, hands and feet, and it's running three different frequencies, including a frequency that penetrates your cell membrane. So it finds <coughs> all the muscle, fat, and water in your body. And the cool thing about this gizmo is it segments you into right arm, left arm, trunk, right leg, left leg for muscle, and the same areas for fat tells you your visceral fat, you know that's the bad fat. Basal metabolic rate, not just a formula based on your age and weight, but a formula based on your body composition. So a lot of really great information. And if you can see down here, every time you take another test, it puts it in that column and starts to draw trend lines. So the reason we use this at the X Gym is because it's really accurate. In fact, it's the gold standard. It's more accurate than underwater weighing. The only thing better is DEXA scan. And it correlates really well with DEXA, especially if you're hydrated and, you re and it's repeatable if you're, if you're the same amount of hydrated because that's how it senses muscle. And this is our fancy schmancy reverse osmosis water machine. It's a filter at the X Gym. Instead of those, you know, jugs that you put on top that's going to suck in ambient air every time you see it glug. This is a sealed system, reverse osmosis. It's got a stainless steel holding tank and it shoots ozone through that water while it's there to completely sterilize it and super oxygenate it. Jury's still out if that really helps or not, but you know, it can't hurt. So that's the water machine we have there. And I also have my own ozonator. This is at home. You see the little diffuser in the glass, fill it full of water, and it ozonates the water. So oxygenates ozone, so you're drinking that ozone. And some people get scared of ozone because it's a toxin, and it is. But who knows here what hormesis means? Hormesis means that a little bit of a bad thing is actually, can, actually, can actually be good for you. And then when you get a medium amount, it can be a wash. And then a big amount can kill you. So this actually stimulates your system to create its own antioxidants. But it also cleans your blood. So a cool little fun hack there. And oh, also. If I cook and burn something, especially fish, then I turn this on without the water and it ozonates the whole place and it grabs those molecules and takes them out and then it smells better. So then when my beautiful Beverly back there comes home, she doesn't smell the burnt fish. <laughs> and this is what we have in our fridge. So this is a zero water filter. A couple slides ago you saw the fancy schmancy reverse osmosis filtration system. This basically does the same thing. It's not technically RO, but it filters out everything, all of the dissolved solids. So by the time you get your glass of water, and it's gone through this multi-stage filter here, it registers zero for total dissolved solids. Now, most of the stuff in your water that's total dissolved solids 
is actually okay because it's minerals. But some of it is pharmaceuticals from other people that the water treatment system can't get out. And some of it is toxins and poisons. And don't get me started on fluoride. Fluoride, air quotes. So this takes all that crap out. Now, a lot of people say, oh, you know, chlorine, oh, it's so bad for you. And yeah, it is. But it's great that we have it in our water because if we didn't, we'd be like Mexico or a third world country where you're getting all sorts of things. The chlorine that kills the stuff. But then when it gets, so it, it delivers it to your tap without all those microbes in there, but they need to come out. So Brita actually is pretty good at taking out the chlorine, but not the fluoride. Fluoride. This is my shower filter. So it's not just drinking water, but it's also when it gets released out into the air in a vapor form. So when you, you've got, it's great to have a water filter, but you should also need a shower filter because you're actually going to be breathing more of that stuff than you would if you're drinking it. So this is the filter I choose. There's a lot of different good shower filters out there, but um, also with that, with the contact info of that tablet that's going around, if you have questions, email me because I'm going to send out a lot of really cool tips and tricks and things with the first email to everybody that signs up on that. You'll also have my contact info. And then ask me where I get some of this stuff. I'll send you a link. So I call myself a budget biohacker. That's my, my, my second kind of tagline on my Instagram, main Instagram. And this is one of the examples. So you all know about those infrared saunas. And they're great. I highly recommend it if you have the space and five to twenty thousand dollars to get one the quality one but here's my hundred dollar version so my shower's behind this and what i do is i just stick it in there and i turn these infrared lights on they're heat lamps so they heat me up i'm getting the infrared benefit full spectrum i'm getting heated up and you can see sitting on top of there is some niacin so i'll take that about half an hour before so i get the flush and doing all that at the same time, 100 bucks is doing similar. It's not as, as good as the five to $20,000 infrared sauna, but it's good enough for the health benefits. It saves a lot of money. Here's the other side of my bathroom. So you can see here, this is another infrared LED, super intense LEDs, but it's also got infrared back there. And then over here, it looks like a tanning bed and if I stood in front of it long enough, I could get tanned, but I don't. It's just on for two minutes because it's a specific wavelength to give me a full dose of vitamin D in just a few minutes. <coughs> so in the morning, I'm brushing my teeth for a couple minutes. In the evening, I'm brushing my teeth for a couple minutes. I turn both of those things on. I'm eating the health benefits of the infrared. I'm getting the skin benefits of the LED and then the wavelengths for getting my stimulating my skin to produce its own vitamin D because that's the best vitamin D you can get. I also take a supplement, but it's best to get your skin to do it. This is another infrared LED and it's beefy enough that it will penetrate my skull, which sounds scary, but it's good because it's the brain way, it's the, the wavelength that my brain needs, that my brain loves. So it's brain training but it also has a little bit of benefit on the skin. So for those guys who are starting to thin a little bit up here, it can help with um, slowing that down or maybe even reversing. So when Bev and I are watching a movie, then this is shining on my head and benefiting my brain. And 20, 30 minutes is perfect dose. Sometimes I fall asleep occasionally with an on, it's not gonna hurt me. But again, with hormesis, you get to a certain point and so the sweet spot is 20, 30 minutes. And then it starts to have diminishing returns. It never goes below the baseline. So it never goes, this one in particular doesn't go into the harm area. But if I left it all night, now I'd probably too much. Overdose means I just don't get the benefits. And this is a security light on Amazon that is infrared security light. And so it's meant to work with cameras and it goes out like 300 yards, super bright, so you can see what's going on with those infrared cameras and record it at night. But it happens to be the right wavelength and intensity to penetrate my skull. So instead of getting the $700 version, I got the $60 version, it does the same thing. So there's a lot of ways to budget biohack this stuff to save a lot of money and get the same benefits. And here's our pillowcases. Now, neither of us like the feel of these pillowcases, 
So we put them under the top sheet and it still works. And we're laying on it. And the purpose of this is to do grounding. How many people have heard earthing or grounding? So there's lots of different ways to do that. But essentially, it's plugging into the wall outlet, which also sounds scary, right? But it's, it's the whole part of the outlet. It's not the pr two pronged part of the outlet that can kill you. It's the whole part, and it's, it's hooked up to a ground wire. So this is another example of that. This side here is the part that goes into the hole. And then this side here is the part you put around your wrist. And so this is a good thing to do if you're at a desk in front of computers and other tech that's not EMFs. But when you do it with a pillowcase like this, you're grounding all night. So we're always being bombarded with EMFs. We can't get away from it. Even if we moved up, even if we became a hermit and moved up to the mountains and lived in a cave, we're still getting some. That would help a lot, right? But who wants to do that? So biohackers just find ways to mitigate those things. It's our life now. Can't get away from it. So let's try to mitigate it. Here's one way. So all night long, this is like standing outside in the dirt. Five to eight hours you're sleeping, you're stand it's the same as standing in the dirt, which is really good for you. And so in the daytime, if you took off your shoes, go out with bare feet, stand on real ground, grass counts, especially if it's wet. Or you know how, how good you feel when you go to the beach and you walk through the wet sand and you're wading through the water? That's the, the most intense grounding you can do, even better than this. That's why you feel so good. And also if there's wave action, creating negative ions in the air, stuff like that, or what, by a waterfall, standing in the rocks, or wading, all that stuff is connecting you to the earth. And the reason that's important is because there's a certain electron speed from the earth that your body loves. And we used to have that all day, every day, because until about 100 years ago, we had leather-soled shoes, which was a mild conductor. So we were getting those electron transfers. Nowadays, we got these rubber shoes, so we're insulated now, and we got these, these modern foundations for these modern buildings that insulate us. And so we're not getting that that we used to get. So this is a way to get back to it. And again, that plug goes into the round hole, and that round hole connects with all the other outlets in the building. Those wires come together, and they end up down somewhere in the ground, and there's an actual stake driven into the ground. That's how a building is grounded. So what you're doing is you're tapping into that stake in the ground. Is that also known as a Faraday cage? So a Faraday cage is something that's going to completely insulate you from all the EMFs out there, radio waves, everything. This is mitigating that, but it's not insulating you from anything. Your body's still getting bombarded with the EMFs, and this is grounding you so you don't have as much effect. It's not canceling them out like a Faraday cage would, just to take them completely out. And so earlier I said you can you move to the mountains and live in a cave and you're still going to get EMFs. Or you build a Faraday cage, and if it's a good enough one, that's even better than living in the mountains in a, in a cave because now you're blocking 100% block out of everything. Have you ever heard of sensorizers? Mm -hmm. It's something you plug in your outlet and it, it takes a trench and electricity it comes out of the ground because power companies don't ground their electrical, the, you know, the hot lead, they just run up the ground. Yeah. And, and so that, that sort of mitigates the trench and electricity. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Some people look into this. Yeah. Cool. I'm looking into that. Thanks. And that's the neat thing about biohacking and biohackers is there's so much information coming out every day, and none of us know everything, and it changes every day. So you, even if you did know everything, you still you, tomorrow you don't. So that's a really exciting field. It's growing so fast. And here's our curtains in our bedroom. They're blackout curtains. They're not pretty. And I have a little clip here on there, sorry Beth, to, uh, but you know, she knew this when she married me, so, uh, so it keeps the curtain together, and then the light can't get through that little crack in there. And then here is the ring that I'm wearing. So it's an Aura ring, O-U-R-A, and it gives me really useful information. It's an activity tracker, but it's also a really good heart rate tracker at night when I'm asleep and HRV, heart rate variability. And the thing I use it for the most is a sleep tracker. 
so I can see what's going on in my sleep. So here you see I got a lot of hours. Seven is more than I usually get. And I was kind of tossing and turning that night. But I got enough REM. I've tried to get over an hour of REM and an hour of deep. The more the better. But that's my minimum. And then over here, I got under six hours of sleep. But I still got over an hour of REM and deep. And I felt great on both days. And sleep, speaking of sleep, here's a little gizmo that has electric shock and buzz to help you train your biorhythms. So for people that maybe they travel a lot and they want to get into a new time zone quicker or they just have trouble getting to sleep or they're in insomniac where they wake up and they can't get back to sleep, whatever that might be, this can really help with that. I don't have sleep problems myself so I don't really use it much, but it's a cool gizmo. And here is an air quality tester. Eve is her name. And it, she works with a phone app. Tells me the air quality. Doesn't tell you much information, it's just a general air quality. So remember when we had all those fires and smoke all over the place? And she helped out with that. But you can also look it up. And if you have Siri, you can ask Siri, what's the air quality? And name the city, and she'll probably know, which is kind of cool. But this also tracks how well my, my bedroom air filter is working. I have a filter that is HEPA filter, so it takes out you know, the small particulates. It also has carbon system in there that takes out the volatile organic compounds, and it has a UV light in there that take out the uh, virus bacteria that are floating around. So it's good to be sleeping in clean air as well. And here is a little meter that I can carry with me that measures my breath ketones. So it helps to determine if I'm in ketosis, and I'm cyclic keto, so I'm keto, keto, in ketosis most of the time, but I come out of once in a while because I've been doing keto for a really long time. And I particularly, I, I do keto because it's the most convenient. But I promote lots of different diets. The diet I usually get people on at the X Gym, or at least get them started with diets, is the Mediterranean because it's the easiest, smallest step from the standard American diet, which most people start with. And then I see if they can do that. And then if they can, then if it works for them, great. And they can stay out the rest of their life if they want. But then if they want something else, then we'll talk about one of the other ones. Maybe it's primal, maybe it's paleo, maybe it's the blood type diet, which is also a good diet. There's no research that I've seen that prove it actually works with your particular blood type and you should align with that part of the book. But it has four really good diets in there. So I say, sure, start with your blood type and then when you get tired of that, pick another blood type and do that one. Because all of the diets in there are going to be better than standard American diet. So let's just get you off that. You had a question? Yeah, uh, do you do intermittent fasting? I do intermittent fasting, probably five days a week. And there's lots of different ways to do that. Personally, I prefer the um, 16 hour. So I'm eating eight hours a day and I'm not 16 hours a day. And that's the most convenient for me. How long have you been doing it for? Um, the intermittent fasting, probably, I don't know, three years. There's just like certain things I'm noticing now. Like, I don't know if there's like this build up period that we used to it, because I've seen all the benefits yeah. to it, or what? Like, it, that's a good question, because yeah. everyone's different. Yeah. Yeah. And everyone is really unique, and I just counsel people based on them. I mean, there's, like I said, there's no perfect diet for everybody. And there's no perfect strategy for everybody. Everyone's different. Everyone has their own unique physiology, brain needs, body needs, all that stuff. So it's, you gotta experiment with yourself. That's why you're here, because you're interested in biohacking. So that's, you're biohacking yourself. You're taking my ideas and all the other ideas that you learn about, and you're just trying them all out. They're all the safe, healthy options out there. Try it and see. And that's the essence of biohacking, figuring out what your best perfect formula is for your physiology and your brain and all that. Do you have thoughts about the bulletproof diet? Yeah, I think it's, I think that's another good one. It's essentially keto. Yeah. What yeah. do you think about bulletproof coffee using medium chain triglycerides and, and yep. grass fed do, do you think that's a problem with your cholesterol or then beyond that, do you think the cholesterol is really the big issue? That, right. That, Right, and everyone, again, reacts differently to that diet. Some people's cholesterol goes up, total cholesterol. Some people it goes down. 
But what I have found is the true keto people, the ones that are really doing it and not cheating, are going to have a favorable cholesterol ratio, whether that total number goes up or not. The ratio is going to improve, and their triglycerides are going to go down, and their their high density lipoproteins are going to go up, and the VLDLs, the the one that type of cholesterol that actually is the one that that attaches inside those cracks and fissures in your arteries, that goes down too. So. The, the healthy numbers, as far as the cholesterol goes, are going to improve, and the total number is worthless information. They shouldn't even tell us what that number is. It shouldn't even be on the blood test. VLDL should be on every blood test, and total should be com completely off the blood tests. But it's the reverse. The, the total number is on all the blood tests, and VLDLs you have to ask for. So if you know your VLDL and your your inflammation number, your high sensitivity C-reactive protein test, then that's a better indicator of what's going on in your arteries or not. Because if you're really inflamed all the time, that's what's causing those cracks. And then if you have high VLDLs, that's what's filling those cracks. Bad combination. So those are the numbers to really look at and just completely ignore the, the total number. In fact, the progressive doctors, especially in Japan and some of the European nations, they like to see their patients, their target is to get them up to 250, because cholesterol is actually good. They like to see, they don't like to see low cholesterol because there are studies that show very strong correlation with low cholesterol in, in heart disease, but not the high. There's no studies that actually show that, that aren't funded by drug companies that sell you cholesterol medicine. So there's my soapbox. I'll get off it and we'll move on. <laughs> so here's a couple heart rate monitors. Personally, I prefer the Wahoo. It's a chest strap, it's great, it's very accurate. Polar's a little more expensive, but it works with the Jacob's Lander that we have, which I'll show you, so it's kind of handy for me. And then down bottom, here at the bottom, there's, there's a scotch that um, goes on my forearm. And it's mildly accurate, it's better than the heart rate monitor on my Garmin. They're both an LED sensing. Um, and for the most part, most of those aren't very good yet. We haven't really come up with the right technology. Some people, it's just right on. Like a third of the people out there, it's right on whether you're working out or not. For me, if I'm resting, this will be pretty accurate, but as soon as I start working out, it just goes haywire and just doesn't. My, I can get my heart rate pretty high just doing really high intensity stuff, and so I think what's happening is it just doesn't believe it. It's like, wow, well, I can't be that high for your age, so we're just gonna cut it in half and tell you that's what it is. So it's not very good. This is also the cheapest. So remember, burn this image in your mind because it's the most accurate, in my opinion, and the cheapest. And so when you put that with my Garmin app for my watch, then you can have, this is all day yesterday. Does and it do heart rate variability? Yeah, yeah, it does, yeah. Well, it's the app that's gonna do that. So the Wahoo is gonna sense your heart rate and send it to whatever app you have that can figure out the HRV. So here we go, I got a couple spikes here, up to maximal, and that was towards the morning where I did my short workout, where I do it actually, this is particularly, was a cardio day. And then uh, I thought I was done, but then I was recovering down here, and doing some stuff, and then I go, no, heck, I want to do another one, because I felt like it, so I did. And then through the rest of the day, and then here's where I worked out with one of the members, did something intense just to help them through it, and then a couple more members down here help them through it. So, you know, throughout the day I'm getting little spikes here and there too, but that's what it looks like a whole day worth of heart rate. This is the Phoenix 5X. Okay. I, uh, so this I don't. I have to compare it with the ring, okay. and they're right on. They yeah. both say the same thing, okay. but it's so thick and bulky. And on the order, do you have the heritage or the balance? Say what? Do you have the heritage? Um, I don't know. It's I got it last year okay. at Dave Asprey's Biohacker in Beverly Hills, the convention down there. But good question. What's great is you can shut the uh, EMF off. Yes, thank you. Yeah, you're right. And it's very low, 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 low energy. So you have to put the ring right by your phone to download it because you know the Bluetooth is really low emitting. So it's. About five days. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Got a good battery. 
So here's another hack is over the years, the last 30 years, I've developed a methodology at XGen to save people time. Now I used to save, I used to spend a lot of time in the gym because it was fun. You know, back in my 20s, high school, college, it's fun to work out two hours a day. But then I got busy, family, real job, all that kind of stuff. Too busy for that anymore. So that's when I started hacking the time thing with all the latest research that I was reading in exercise science and came up with, finally, a methodology, 21 minutes twice a week, that's equivalent to about seven hours of traditional training. So my clients, my own personal training clients were my guinea pigs after I graduated SPU with my degree in exercise science. And they helped me over the next 10 years develop this methodology. And it got shorter and shorter and shorter and more effective and more effective and safer through that time until I got to this. And then from the data we've got since 1998 when I opened the X gym, this is, what we, this is the results we have. It's equivalent to about seven, 42 minutes a week, seven hours of traditional training. Because we're talking cardio, strength, endurance, all in the same workout. Is it like HIIT? Yes. We do HIT, HIIT high intensity training for strength, and we do HIIT, high intensity interval training. And what I tell people is the X gym goes beyond that. What I call it is super high intensity training, but then we have an acronym problem. Right? And some people say, oh, it's safe high intensity training. Same acronym problem. So we don't use the acronym. Now here is a little video of me. I just did this a couple days ago. This is in the X gym. And this is a machine. So this machine looks normal, right? It's like you'd see in other gyms. It's got the little arms that adjust. And normally you would see a weight stack in here with guide rods. I took that out. I put in a pulley and a winch. There's an ATV winch, 2,000 pound winch down here. It's controlled speed. Runs through the pulley, which has a load cell up here and a readout right here which tells the person how hard they're pulling. And so this is isokinetics. So you are necessarily doing a max rep the entire time with perfect form because it's so controlled. And you can see here I've got an armband on. And this is blood flow restriction training, if you've heard of that. And so what's happening is the surface blood vessels are being constricted. So the blood can't get out of my arm, but the artery is deeper than that. So the blood can get into my arms, called occlusion training. And so the blood kind of builds up in there. And so the, all of the great things that help with recovery and hormone release and all that kind of stuff are getting trapped in there, feeding the muscle faster and helping with strength increases. So I've got that around my arm there. And I'm wearing a shirt, an Athos. Everyone heard of Athos brand shirt? So you've got the little, the little unit right here that has the battery in it that's measuring what the electrodes in the shirt are telling you for muscle intensity. So I'm stacking my hacks here. And I'll push play so you can see how it goes. And so I'm, I'm doing stop motion here. I've got the little button here in my hand to control it. Now here's slow motion. And then here's our incline trainer. So this is 50% grade. Most treadmills goes up to 15. The higher the better, because the harder it is on your muscles, but also incline is great on your joints. It's easy on your joints. So I'm getting way more work done in way less time with way less impact than a regular treadmill. So I'm going there until I fall off. This is just a demo run here. But I'll go until I'm basically falling over almost, and then uh, I just come off the end, off the back of it, and then either rest or go over to the next thing. Here's the rope machine. So it's an endless rope, magnetic eddy current. I'm getting full body or full upper body. Here's the Jacob's ladder. And you can see this is even steeper than the incline trainer. And these are like ladder rungs, so it's like a ladder treadmill. And so because of the steepness, it's really low impact, but it's really hard on the muscles, which is good, and the heart and lungs. One minute full speed on that, and you just lie down on the floor. So it's a great, it's another really great time hack. And those are pretty low injury. Oh gosh, yes, yeah. And the reason is it's really super easy on the joints and the tendons, because it's low impact. 
And so that's why it's such low injury. And this is isokinetics, which makes it safe because you can control what you're doing, you can keep your form. Instead of, you know, big heavy weights going like this where you lose control and you stop concentrating and you can do, you know, bad mechanics. And then, oh, and then so between, between exercises, I will put my hand inside of this core control. So in here, there is a thermos, an insulated thermos, where I've got ice and water. And then you've got a hose that comes out of here and it circulates water through the inside of this through a little cooling pad that's on my palm. And it's also a vacuum. So this is a wrist seal, so it's airtight. And what it's doing is it's pumping, pulling blood into my hand and it's cooling my palm. Because there's special capillaries on your palm and the bottom of your foot that's like a radiator for your core. So what happens is I do all this really hard work and then I come over and sit down for five minutes and catch my breath. And it's, it's taking cool water, the right temperature, about 50 degrees, across those capillaries. It's not wet, it's just a pad. And it's cooling, and it's my radiators. So it's got one of my four radiators. It's cooling down my core. It only takes about five minutes where it would take an hour or more without that. And then I'm ready to go, and I'm recovered, and I can put all the energy I need to into the next thing, which in this case is gonna be our unstable surface surfboard, where I'm doing slow motion squats, which is really hard to do, even with body weight, because of that unstable surface. So it's working on my proprioceptors. Then I'm doing push-ups. You can't really see my hands sliding out, but my feet are also sliding out. And this is on, on carpet sliders. They're furniture movers but I'm using these carpet sliders again to get lots of different axes going at the same time, controlled motion, to do that time hack. So I'm not doing a whole bunch of sets and reps. All I have to do is one set to complete muscle fatigue with a long time under tension, two, three minutes without any rests, even between reps. And that's equivalent to five sets or more of really heavy, ballistic, harmful exercise that's not harmful. Have you ever uh, measured the differences in VO2? Oh yeah, and VO2 increase? Yes. So with the X-Gym, what we've noticed is when people are doing our strength classes, their VO2 is definitely going to increase. So for, for instance, if somebody came to us with a VO, this is how much oxygen your muscles can use. Somebody came to us with a VO2 of 35, after about probably six months, they'd be in the 40s, which is a pretty fast, good increase. Now, with the strength classes only, or the strength training only, that's limited. You'll, you'll hit a ceiling, probably around the 40s-ish. Then if you want more, you're gonna have to do high intensity interval training, more cardio specific stuff. And we have some of those classes too. So if people wanna take that next step for cardio, they can do that. Or we'll work with them on what they can do outside the X-Gym to increase that cardio if they care. But the amount of cardio that people get with us, just with our strength program, is enough to have a lot of fun out there and doing their hiking, biking, kayaking, all the fun stuff they like to do, to not only keep up with the rest of the group they usually hang out with, but be at the front of that pack. And that's what most people want. So most of our members don't actually do any cardio. They come in for the 21 minutes twice a week, and that's enough for them to excel with all the stuff that they like to do in their life. And our, it's, that's what we do, it's about life fitness. It's about making people happy and living healthy and active lives and to be able to do that. So now if I do need recovery, because I'm the first one I experiment on when I'm coming up with a new methodology or a new exercise or whatever that is, sometimes it'll make me sore. And I need, I need to speed up my recovery. This will help with that. This is the Mark Pro. And I'll put electrodes where I need to put them on the muscle that's sore or the area of my body that I need to flush out. And this is what does that. So, it's beyond electric stim, it's more of a frequency that gets a little bit deeper and it's more of like a drainage kind of thing to speed that up, speed up recovery, especially with delayed onset muscle soreness. And this, it speeds up circulation, so it looks like a car waxer, and when you turn it on it feels a bit like a car waxer, but it's, instead of spinning around it's a, it's a random orbit, and then the frequency will really speed up circulation in that area that it's on, so another way to flush things out. 
So you do that first, then you put the Mark Pro on, and it's like three days worth of recovery for an hour's worth of time. And here's my office. So when I was first putting this presentation together, I was like, oh, what, what pictures am I going to take? So I was sitting there and I go, well, I have a bunch of stuff around me here, so let me take a picture. So I just stepped back. I had this... Uh, this muscle relaxer, it's like deep tissue where you can find a trigger point and crank on it. And then I've got a bunch of computers you know, showing EMFs. And so that's where this comes in. I already showed you this, the wrist, where I, I strap that on there. And then on my home desk, I have a wrist pad. So instead of strapping in with the wrist, I have my hands resting on this grounding mat. And so again, I'm mitigating the EMFs I'm being bombarded with, so I'm not sitting there all day experiencing that. And while we're on this, the subject of or looking at screens, I want to show you some of my glasses. So this is the frugal version. It's blocking out all the blue light. And then at night, or the evening, if Bev and I are watching a, you know, like Andy Griffith show, like we're addicted to the Andy Griffith show. Who knows what the Andy Griffith show even is? Okay, yeah, so if you dated yourselves, <laughs> but it's such a great show. And but instead of having a big, huge screen mounted on the wall, I have a LED projector that shines up on the wall, which drastically reduces the blue light, but it's still there. And so this one blocks out blue and green, which is great for 7 p.m. or two hours before bedtime to start getting your body ready, biorhythms ready, for going to bed and getting good sleep. Because light is really what sets your biorhythms. And then these are my pinhole glasses. So little pinholes, so if I'm looking at stuff and being on the computer a long time, and I'm look, or I'm looking at stuff up close, this helps my eyes work less hard. It, it takes longer to read stuff. But you can still look through them, and it helps you focus, so then your eyes aren't straining as much. But see, the other reason I got these big ones here is I can put them over the hat, and I can stack my hacks, and I can be getting both, blocking out the blue light, and getting my eyes a little bit of relaxation, so they're not wearing out. And here's an isometric machine. So these are grips on the side. And if you push in or pull out, it shows you how hard you're doing that. So you can do isometric exercise. It's all really about muscle contraction and time under tension, staying in contraction until you get to complete fatigue. That's the secret sauce. That's the bottom line. With traditional training, you're not getting that because you're doing these fast reps and you're building momentum. So you go fast to the top and then you're changing direction and going back down. So I'm getting lots of contraction down here and then I've built momentum and now I'm changing direction, zero contraction. All the muscle needs is a quarter second to refuel. So if I'm trying to get stronger and bigger, that's perfect. But if I just want to get toned and defined and have endurance and strength and functional strength, I don't want to rest between every single rep. I want constant contraction. You can do it this way by taking the momentum out, slowing it down, contraction the entire time. Or you can do it isometric with this, lots of ways to do it but lots of gizmos to help with that. Does that reduce your cholesterol? Most types of exercise will reduce cholesterol, and the higher intensity, the better. But again, it's about the numbers. And so the really cool thing about exercise is regardless of that total number, it's going to crank up that HDL. The reason I'm asking this is Asprey has been uh, talking about a, a grip device. It's like 600 bucks. Have you seen that bypass? Yeah. yeah. And I, I just question whether it's worth that. Uh, I, I wouldn't. They have had lots of really strong correlations between grip strength and dementia and health, overall health, stuff like that. I don't really think it's the grip workouts that are doing that. I think just people with a strong grip are also really fit people. So I think fitness, overall fitness, is the key. And here's my hydrogen water machine. The jury's still out on hydrogen water and hydrogen and its benefits. And the jury's certainly still out on this company because uh, their customer service is atrocious. And their machine has lots of bugs in it. It's still pretty new. I don't think they're going to make it. But the one good thing about them so far that I've noticed is they put hydrogen in water better than anything I've tried. And so if you're looking for a high concentration, that's great. 
And so I've been running the last three months run an experiment on the water park. Down here is an inhalation hose where the machine is also supposed to do hydrogen inhalation, but it's not measurable and I'm doing all the right things and this is why customer, customer service is ghosting me. So I'm not sure what's going on with that. But um, you know, that's phase number two is to uh, go with that kind of experiment. So the jury's still out on hydrogen water. It helps with energy, okay. which I have noticed. So more stable energy, better mental clarity, and supposed to be helped with um, workout recovery too, is the main things that I'm interested in. And then something else I'm exploring right now is this thing called nutrition, where you send in genetic sample, it's just a cheek swab, and they send you back a report on your genetics and typically what your genetics indicate from mom and dad that you might be challenged with. And then it gives you your customized nutrition in 10 capsules you swallow every day, so five in the morning, five at night, a whole bunch of you know, different kind of supplements. So instead of hacking over time and trying to figure out what supplements are best for your body and your brain, this does it for you based on your genetics. You still need to do some hacking, but it saves some time, saves some energy, I still don't know yet if this company is legit, so I'm not recommending them yet. And I have an appointment to talk with their chief, to do a phone call with their chief scientist because they've got really good questions, see if I can stump her. But um, it's another experiment I'm running. So here's my cousin, and as you can see, he stole all the good genes. And so we share the same grandparents, and he's got legs like grandpa. He's got tree trunks for legs. I got grandma's legs which is what he tells me. And so this is down at Dave Asprey's lab down in Santa Monica, right after they opened. So we took a tour. Um, I'm good friends with the CEO of Upgrade Labs uh, because he used to be a member at the uh, X-Gym before he moved down to California. So it looks like a machine that's exercising the neck muscles, but <laughs> it's really an isometric machine that increases bone density. And he's rocking it because he is really strong. He's also a biohacker and fitness freak and type 1 diabetic. Super healthy, does not use it as an excuse. He works through it and with it to get real strong, real healthy. And so he's also uh, a human experiment for me because if I want to know about, I'll do experiments on myself, you know, with blood work when I eat certain foods to see what it does to my physiology with the normal pancreas with blood sugar. And then I'll send it to him and, ask, and I'll just mail it to him and say, hey, eat this, tell me what it does. <laughs> because you know, his pancreas is offline. And so it's kind of fun to have experiments, him to do that. And he's always willing because he usually tastes pretty good too. And here's JP Sears, this is the it's really super funny YouTubes. So he's talking about ha uh, hack stacks. So trampoline, lymphatic drainage, Combining breathwork training, so he's got, he's got the he's got the elevation mask on while he's doing the trampoline. He's also got the blue locker glasses on. So now he's got the audio book. He puts it on. He says 1,000 percent fast forward. <laughs> so he's saving time. And then binaural beats is going to be the next thing. So he's got the headphones over the headphones. So he's listening to the book at a thousand percent. He's got the binaural beats as he's jumping on the trampoline. It's just one minute long of the longer video that he made that I thought was the funniest. Stacking hacks, and then he gets overloaded too much, <laughs> and there you have it. <laughs> so look him up, because he's, he's great with, with uh, you know, hacks and health and things like that. It's a good channel to subscribe to. This is my Muse headband, and this is my, this, the things that I use the most. So the Muse headband goes like this and it's Bluetooth and it measures my brain waves. So I put that on and it gives me biofeedback through my phone app to tell me if I'm on track or not with meditation. Because when you're doing it with unguided meditation without anything, you're trying to focus, you don't really know. I mean, you, you get distracted and go, oh, I'm thinking about my to-do list. Now let's get back on track and think about the candle I'm supposed to be focusing on or whatever it is. That's all meditation is, just picking something and focusing on it. So you'll catch yourself, but this catches you sooner than that. 
And so every time I get distracted, like these peaks here, the audio feedback tells me. And so then I go, oh, oh, and then I get back on track and I focus what it is. And it gives me little rewards here, chirping birds. I hear chirping birds if I'm doing really good. And so the more birds, the better. And so it's kind of a game. So five minutes using this is equal to about an hour of traditional meditation. And a lot of times I'd also do a brain training exercise along with that. And so I focus on things that are true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, praiseworthy. Those are the suggestions of the Apostle Paul. So I focus on those words because that puts me in a really good state. Those are also really awesome things. And so if my brain's going to be thinking about stuff, it's going to be, I can't stop it. And a lot of times we you know, we go worst case scenario, or we think about, you know, we make up stories in our mind that are traumatic and they never actually happened. Well, why not think about good stuff? So I pour good stuff into my brain and do that for my meditation. Bottom line, biohackers, it's fun. We got lots of gadgets, gizmos, all that stuff is really fun. And the reason that we have all this stuff is really to get back to where we were 200 years ago, before we had all this stuff. <laughs> and so all the gizmos and gadgets and EMFs and electricity and insulating from the earth and all that kind of stuff, now we're just trying to get hack back to that with the hacks. So I can't even say grandma because you know it's really been in 100 years or more that, that we went back in time that much and we be back on track. But you know, she would just told you to go play outside, not in front of the TV playing a video game, to get fresh air, to be running around, to get oxygen to the brain. She would have told you to eat real food. Get back in your kitchen and make your own food and make sure it's real food, organic food. Go to bed early. Best sleep time is 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. Play well with others. Relationships, huge. That's the bottom line. All these gizmos and gadgets help us to get there. But if we did this stuff, that's a biohack. It doesn't cost anything. Another thing I'll send you, people that signed up on the tablet, is top five ways to get healthy, fit, and younger. Number one, exercise. Oxygen to the brain. Two, good nutrition, making your own food. Three, quality sleep. Four, brain training. Five, relationships. Working on relationships. And if the brain training and relationship stuff is hard, that's great for your brain. So if anybody here is in a hard relationship, you're still getting benefit out of that. <laughs> because your brain is working and it's really good for your brain to figure that out and to fix it and to work with that other person. We're pack animals, we're relationship beings. And so when we're working on relationships, it's awesome for the brain. Isolation and loneliness is a killer for the brain. We're not designed that way. Have you ever used the NVAC? Yes. The yeah, yeah. Pretty challenging. Oh yeah, very challenging. And brain games like that is awesome. And just a reminder, if you're gonna do a brain game, there's a lot of websites that do those, and they're all great, but what most people do is they start out with the easy ones, and then when it starts to get hard, they go, oh, this is getting frustrating. I'm just going to pick a new one and get good at that one too, or good-ish at that one. And then they just keep jumping around. But what they don't realize is when it starts to get hard, that's when you're starting to get the brain benefits. So if it's hard and frustrating, and you're, it's like, almost like you're going backwards sometimes, and that's frustrating too. That's okay. Even if you are going backwards some days, your brain is still getting 100% of the benefits making those new nerve networks and neural connections and all that kind of stuff. That's the best time to do it. And yeah, Osprey improved his IQ over a short period of time by 12 points. Yeah, and NBAC is the, actually the best way to do that. And then, on the last slide, we talked about brain, brain training tricks, and I've actually developed a whole bunch of these. A lot of them are YouTube, a lot of them are blog posts. And um, so this one is EFT, tapping technique. You've probably heard of that. It's basically an acupressure technique where you can disrupt a neural network in your brain, like a craving that you want to get rid of, or a mood that you want to change. Just a lot of really cool things out there. Brain training test, or brain type test. There's 16 different brain types. And the test I developed over the last 30 years determines which brain type you are. It will give you specific tips, tricks, and hacks for your brain type, biohacks. And the reason I developed it was I was really frustrated with the normal personal trainers out there telling their clients to do a certain thing. 
and then yelling at their client if they can't do that certain thing. But chances are, their client has a different brain type. And it just doesn't make sense to them. And so that's why I came up with the brain type test with all my brain research for people to find stuff that actually works for them. This is a sample, one, one of the page of the four pages that you get on the report. It tells you kind of tendencies and, and traits and specific brain training techniques for your type. Everyone here that signed up on that list is gonna get this for free. So it's gonna be a huge hack for you. And then finishing up here, top seven brain foods. Fish, cacao, chocolate, but it's you know the, un, the unprocessed powder. Nuts and seeds, especially walnuts. Coffee, it's actually really good for your brain. Organic only, please. Avocados is great for your brain. Coconut oil, MCTs, it's great for your brain. Eggs is great for your brain. And then, fitness chocolate. If you go to xgem.com, click the word recipes at the top of the page, you go to our recipe site, and it, will ha it has these ingredients in it, and you can make it yourself at home, because the recipe's on there, and if you click on one of the rest on the, one of the ingredients, handy Amazon link. It doesn't get easier than this. All the ingredients show up at your door. You use a blender, cookie sheet, refrigerator. Done. Ten minutes, make a whole batch, and it's super good for you, sugar free, all that stuff. And then just get creative with your own flavors. So I highly recommend getting started on this ASAP. This is a brain food, and it's delicious and it'll help get off the sugar chocolate out there. And there you have it. So if you can, we're at our limit. So if you, if you have to leave, great. If you want to stick around and look at some of my other gizmos and gadgets that I use here, great. Or if you have any questions, that's great. Yeah, go ahead. Are you a proponent of cool showers? And if so, do you have any hacks for them? Yes. So funny you'd say that because last Saturday, just a few days ago, we had an event at the X Gym where I was the first part of the event talking about brain stuff, and the second half of the event was one of Wim Hof's uh, primary students, one of his first students. And he came and, talk, and taught us some Wim Hof breathing, which is great, I highly recommend it. And the Wim Hof breathing, he kind of developed it over, over time by accident. You know, he's not a yogi or anything. Um, he just went through some life stuff and he was just exploring and then ended up creating this breathing that all of a sudden had these really cool effects and to continue to develop it and teach it to other people and it just kind of grew organically and now it's a really big thing. And Wim Hof has set a whole bunch of records for cold exposure. He spent over an hour in, encased in ice without dying <laughs> because a normal person can make it six or seven minutes before they you know, pass out and go hypothermic. But he's learned how to control his parasympathetic nervous system, his autonomic nervous system through this breathing technique. And so Google it, you can find out how to do it. It's easy to find out for free. But and then if you wanna go all in, you can go to visit him personally in Poland and go through his one week course where at the end of that, it's very intensive, where at the end of that week, you have hacked your autonomic nervous system and you'll go hiking up a mountain in the snow in shorts with whim and you'll be fine doing that. It's really phenomenal. And so part of the whole Wim Hof thing and cryotherapy, ice bath, you know, whatever, cold showers, all that stuff, is hacking, is that hack. I hate cold showers. <laughs> so I just do the breathing and I leave the cold stuff out. <laughs> but for those people that want to get into it, like my buddy John, um, I say, great, go for it. It's awesome. Have fun. Yeah. So, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, I just said that there are a number of diets out there, and I'm sorry, not even one of them is good one. But do you have a perspective on the whole like plant-based versus not for a pure like fitness perspective, or just mental clarity? Yes. So if somebody wants to go vegan, you know, real plant-based to that extreme, great. But you got to really research it and educate yourself on how to do that, because you'll need some supplements and to you know, cycle the food and just get it, become an expert before you start. And to make sure you're getting enough protein and the right protein combinations for the exercise part of it. 
Then on the other end of the spectrum is the carnivore diet, where you just, if, if you go super strict, you're just eating meat, bones, and organs, and drinking water, and that's it. Again, you gotta educate yourself on that, because you have, you eat too much liver, and you can OD on some vitamins, some micronutrients. Um, or you'll take a supplement, like, you know, liver, desiccated liver supplements that can be good too if you can't stand liver. Uh, both diets can be actually really healthy, believe it or not. Both ends of the spectrum. But if you go to that extreme, you gotta get your education first before you start and become your own expert before you start. So take some time. That'll take you about six months to learn everything you need to learn before you start that. I'm in the middle. I'm a little bit more towards the carnivore because I like my meat than the vegan. I've tried vegan, and with my physiology, I felt horrible. Other people say the same, the opposite about the carnivore. You know, they go to meat and they feel horrible. We all have to hack our own physiology and figure it out. We have different genetics, we have different background, we're adapted for different things. What I can tell you is, none of us are adapted for processed food and the food in the bags and boxes that we're getting out of the stores. Because that's only been around 100 years. and it, depending on how long you believe humans have been around, <laughs> either way, that's just a little tiny blip on that timeline, and it's not enough time to get adapted to it. So we're very maladapted for that kind of food. That's why earlier I was talking so much about getting back in your kitchen and using real food and making it with your own hands to get healthy. It has to happen. If you go down to the beach in the summer around here and, and find, try to find someone over 40, who's in really good shape. A, you probably won't be able to, but if you're lucky enough to find that one person walking around down there, go up and ask them how, how long, how much time they spend in their kitchen. Same answer every time. So it's, you just gotta be willing to put in the time. For me, it's only an hour a week. In Bev, about an hour a week. So the, the two of us together, two hours a week. And we usually lump it all together on you know the day off on Sunday. But that's not much time. And that kind of time investment for our health? Oh, heck yeah. I got here just a little bit late, but did you go over the barrels of cheese? The cell phones? No, the EMFs, yeah. So Dave Asprey has a story about that. So he used to carry his phone in his pocket, and when he went in for a bone scan one day, his scan came back with a rectangle-shaped uh, bone density issue. And the doctor's like, well, your bone density is fine, except for this spot. And he goes, oh, that's the shape of my cell phone. <laughs> so then he didn't want to not carry a cell phone in his pocket. So what he did is he went home and he, and he, he found a fabric, a reflective fabric, to sew in all his pockets. <laughs> so now he's got those pockets. But so that was a while ago. So now, yes, you have those you protective. Can buy yes, you can buy the, now you, on Amazon, you look for the EMF shielding. And it's great. now. I'm a budget biohacker, so I did something even cheaper. I took my phone, and I took it out, and put some double-sided tape on the inside, and then put in tinfoil. And I always carry it like this. I don't carry it in my pocket, but if I have to, or in my coat, I put it in this side. And it does really reflect out. I have an EMF tester in here, so I tested it myself. And if you do it right, it'll put those radio waves out that direction, and not in this direction. And it's not foolproof, but it helps, and it's better. And those cases are great too. Some of them work, some of them don't. Look at the reviews, Amazon's great with that. Because there's a lot of geeks out there like me that'll test it when they buy it, and they'll write their review. Yeah, I yeah. test my own Yeah. But it's better. And so, you know, we're here, we're mitigating stuff. Yeah, and that's what a biohacker's all about. So I also missed the very beginning. First question is, once you start doing all this stuff, yeah. right, how do you control so like is there sort of like a runaway train like being so engraved in your pillowcase like all these guys and all of a sudden now you're in Hawaii for a week like, are you able to enjoy Hawaii? it's a slippery <laughs> slope it's a very slippery slope and I'm really glad you brought that up because we got to keep it in perspective I already said we're not getting away from this stuff it's going to be around and, and it's just going to get worse 5G is going to make it a lot worse so but we can't get away from it so 
it's scary stuff. They haven't even tested 5G on any human experiment. They haven't done one controlled experiment on 5G, but they're <laughs> rolling it out like crazy. Look to Europe and Asia mm -hmm. for research, because they will do research on it, and it won't be biased. Exactly, yeah, you gotta go outside our country to, to find the good stuff. I actually subscribe to a Russian site that has all those studies that, not, that aren't censored. And uh, yeah, it's really interesting. But um, so you just, the OCD part is you just gotta control it yourself. And you just got to be able to live life. You know, we're, we're biohackers to enjoy life more, right? It's not, we're not biohackers to interfere with that enjoyment of life. So if you have to take a week off, so what? It's not going to kill you. You were alive before you were a biohacker, and you're probably doing all right. Biohacking is going to help you live longer and healthier and, and try to keep disease at bay and stuff like that. It's great. I've, I've hacked my physiology, so I know... Even though my mom died of early onset Alzheimer's, I'm not gonna get it. Even if I have the gene for it, I'm not gonna get it, because I know how to hack it, so I won't. This is another reason that, the biggest reason that I got so much into the brain science since 2000 when she was diagnosed, and just poured myself into it. That's why I learned so much about it. And then I also know I'm not gonna get cancer. Can't, because I know I've hacked it, I figured it out. So cancer can't grow in me. But if I take a week off, I'm in Hawaii or I'm on vacation or something, I don't have all my gizmos and gadgets, I'm still not gonna get cancer in that week. I'm still gonna eat properly, and I'm still gonna do the healthy habits that I have. So what if I don't have my gizmos and gadgets? I'll get back home to them. And then maybe if I did build up some toxins when I was gone without them, when I get back, they'll help me get rid of those. Yeah, you just gotta keep everything in perspective and start small, start with one thing. I told you about a lot of stuff today. Start with one thing. Start with clean water. That would be the first step, I tell everybody. Hydration. Start drinking more water and make sure it's real clean. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right.